what we think one of the most interesting findings of this work is that we have actually built additional solar and wind capacity. And we use that word additional in a, in a very special way. So we've built out in this result more store, uh, excuse me, more solar and more wind capacity than would be needed to reach 70%. And, and, and typically, you know, that's, that's sort of viewed in a negative light because that le means that we're curtailing some of that solar energy and wind mm -hmm. energy. Uh, what we're showing here is though that the advantages of having that capacity allow us to turn on and off those solar and wind plants and ramp them up and down. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the flexibility that it, that it gives us so uh, allows us to treat them uh, in a more dispatchable fashion. And that is a very valuable thing that ends up reducing our requirements for storage and it gives lower costs overall. When, when Josh uses the term dispatchable, he means sort of power on demand. What the utilities look at as, uh, as a firm power, something they can reliably provide to their customers, uh, whether that's a, a residential customer or a commercial customer or, or, or something else. And so that analysis that we did working with uh, the technical committee uh, and, that, and the two authors from Clean Power Research did uh, was an hour by hour analysis. So the things we were feeding in, we were looking at for all the hours in a year, which is 8,760 hours in a year, what's the solar potential? What's the wind potential? What's the actual load data? The load being what's the demand for electricity? Who's taking that electricity and where is it going? And so that 70%, again, is not just, oh, this is during the summer and some windy times. It's over the over an hourly basis over the whole year. So important to understand that.